Funeral arrangements for former First Lady Rosalind Carter are now set. Former President Jimmy Carter's wife died yesterday at the age of 96. A wreath-laying ceremony will be held Monday at Georgia Southwestern State University. The former First Lady will lie in repose at the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library and Museum. Following that, her funeral will be held at a church in Plains, Georgia, her hometown for all of her life, one week from Wednesday. CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bajorquez joins us now from Plains, Georgia. Manuel, you know, the Carters have such a rich history, particularly in the state of Georgia and in helping people there. How are people that you're speaking with remembering the former first lady? We just spoke with the owner of a political memorabilia shop just behind us here in Plains, and he had many interactions with Rosalind Carter over the years. And we asked him, what does she mean for the world? And he said, look, she did a, a lot of really great things. <laughs> Uh, and trying to help people. But on the very personal level, he says the thing that he will take away is just kindness. Uh, he uh, got almost a little teary-eyed talking about that. And he said, we don't feel like she's gone, like she's left us necessarily, but we do feel like she's passing the torch. And that if you want to honor her memory, respect her memory, he said, just be kind to others. So that's how people are remembering her here in Plains, Georgia today. You know, Manny, uh, the, the former president, Jimmy Carter, he's been in hospice care, actually went into hospice care before Rosalind. Do we know if his condition will allow him to attend any of these memorials, remembrances for his late wife? Yeah, no public statements have been made so far about whether the former president will be able to attend any of the ceremonies that are happening. Uh, likely, uh, it would appear that he is going to be part of the private ceremonies and funerals, the ones that are happening here in Plains, and there will be a private burial over at the family estate. But as far as the events in America that are happening next week or at the Carter Center in Atlanta, I'd imagine that given his state right now, that he is in hospice care, that he may not be able to be part of those, but he will be surrounded by family and friends when they finally lay her to rest next week. Yeah, he's been in hospice care since February, but you know, we saw his appearance at the mm. Peanut Festival. We understand that he and Rosalind continued uh, holding hands and eating their peanut butter ice cream um, really right to the end there. Uh, Manny, I'm just wondering, in their tributes to Rosalind Carter, can you speak a little bit more about what many are highlighting, which is her focus on mental health during a time in which the subject really wasn't talked about? Explain to us not only what she did to draw That's attention right. to this issue, but why she cared so much. You know, it's interesting looking now at the way we talk about mental illness and mental health. Uh, we may not be at this position uh, where we talk about it more freely and openly if it weren't for the fact that she decided to take that up as one of her major causes. And not only take it up as a cause, but really be active even in the legislative realm. She was the second uh, first lady to testify before Congress where she was pushing for legislation that would help improve mental health in community centers and to try to get it included in more health coverage, uh, which is something that we see today. So really, uh, when you talk about taking up a cause, as we know now, she kind of redefined the role and was really active, uh, not only in attending the cabinet meetings that were happening at the White House, which ruffled some feathers, but she didn't seem to care. Uh, it just made her, I think, a much more equal partner with the president when it came to trying to uh, have those conversations that a married couple would do at the end of the day about how to move things forward. All right, Manny Bajorquez, thank you. Stuart McLaurin joins us now for more on all this. He's president of the White House Historical Association, a wonderful association. The, the work is terrific, uh, helping us understand the past and where we're heading for the future. Stuart, uh, I've been reading about uh, Rosalind's role in the Jimmy Carter White House and really how it was a dual White House. Time magazine at one point describing her as the second most powerful person in the world. And there's documentation of notes that Jimmy would write on, on, on different memos. Uh, Rose, what think, question mark, is one example. So she really was a partner in this. Talk to us, if you could, about how she defined the modern role of the First Lady, took it from the past into the future. Well, thank you for having me with you today. And it's such an honor to speak about Mrs. Carter and her time as our First Lady. Certainly in their over 77 years of marriage, they were extremely close to one another. She was very involved in all of his political activities and was recently mentioned and just before me that she did attend the cabinet meetings. She also attended the national security briefings in the morning. 
Her notes were often on his speech drafts that would go back and forth to the speech writers and to the president. It was shared that at the peace accord conversations that took place at Camp David, she herself took the most meticulous notes, the most accurate human accounting of that amazing experience. And so she was very deeply involved. Now, I think all of our first ladies are strong components of their husband's counsel and they advise them. But I think Mrs. Carter had a particular closeness to him. She also established early in their presidency that official office of the first lady, which we now refer to as the East Wing of the White House. Yeah, uh, Stuart, she did so much while in office, uh, the New York Times calling her the most powerful first lady since Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, but then part of what her legacy actually, I think, is so much more than that. It's so much more about what she did to transform the role of a former first lady who really served the public after leaving the White House. Talk to us about that. Well, her entire life spanned 96 years from President Calvin Coolidge to President Joe Biden, and 42 of those years were post-presidency. And she and President Carter were involved in so many projects together. I doubt they were separated more than a handful of days the entire time after they left the White House. Habitat for Humanity and so many other worthwhile causes. But yet she was quiet spoken. She was often referred to during the presidency as the steel magnolia, but she was soft spoken. She had a very humble presence about her. The last time I was personally with her was at the funeral for Mrs. Reagan in 2016. And she was lovely, poised, gracious, kind. Uh, but I have a feeling that she's not the type of person you would ever want to cross. You know, the amazing thing about politics in America is it seems so incredibly divisive. And yet, in the end, it seems like everyone regains their sense of perspective and can see once again the goodness in their former political opponents. And so we've seen these people from across the spectrum come forward with statements uh, and, and, and condolences for the Carter family. It makes one think about, now that we can see it as clearly as possible, the legacy as, as a final um, summing up of the life, what, what would you say Rosalind Carter's legacy will be? Well, on occasions like this, we do reflect on the good and who they were as a person and as part of our political leadership. I think she will be remembered as a soft-spoken leader who was strong and wise counsel to her husband, who viewed life and their work on this earth in the long arc of history, not just those four years they served in the White House. I, th I think that is great advice, and uh, it's wonderful that we can do that at least for a moment here. Uh, Stuart McLaren, it's great to talk to you. You're president of the White House Historical Association, a wonderful group. Uh, thank you very much. My honor. Thank you.